Well, hello and welcome back. And today uh, we are back at the Neville House and we just had a very successful, though very tiring uh, cooking demonstration day today. And Carol here was the main attraction. So yeah, would you just yeah, tell a little bit about yourself and uh, what exactly you do here? So yes. Um, well, I'm just a, a guest presenter today. Uh, typically I'm at the Depreciation Man's Museum. I've come down a couple of different times to Woodville and I've enjoyed my time down here. Um, different events and um, doing different activities. Uh, today I was cooking on, on the fire outside. I made three different dishes. Um, one was very simple, which is a baked onion, um, just served as a type of side dish. I also made a baked uh, boiled apple pudding, which is a sweet pudding demonstrating the use of white sugar by the upper class um, citizens. And I made a chicken fricassee again, which would be something that upper class would be very familiar with because of the use of chickens, which would be something that would be expensive to um, to be able to, to eat and process. So that's what we did today. And then I did a demonstration on the many of my herbs and spices that are uh, very commonplace in um, 18th century cooking, as well as some of the wines and different utensils that are used in 18th century cooking. Hey, very oh, good. Um, great. Well, you're very, very, obviously very knowledgeable, and you've done cooking at this point for both uh, people on the frontier, like how the common folk would have eaten, versus today how the gentry would have eaten if you were cooking for the nettles. Um, is there a difference between uh, how the common people, obviously there is, but how the common people would have eaten versus how Satan would have cooked for somebody like the Nettles? Um, well, basically the only, it, the cooking in the 18th century was over an open fire, no matter um, who you were. Uh, common people would have been cooking themselves, and the gentry of obviously would have had servants and people cooking um, for them. Uh, the ingredients are the main they, uh, nibbles would have the finances and the accessibility to citrus. So the chicken fricassee does have lemon in it. The apple pudding is also served with a little bit of lemon squeezed over it to, to cut the sweetness. Um, they also had access to white sugar, which was a very expensive type of ingredient. So that would be their reasoning for having a sweet pudding rather than just savory puddings. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Yes, and um, so what sort of, here's the fun part, what sort of research do you do to research your recipes? Well, I have, I have several different uh, receipt books. Uh, receipt is just a generic term for a list of items, which is what the, the books or uh, what we call recipes now are. Um, also, I research a lot online. Um, Working with people that are much more knowledgeable than myself, I, I do a lot of that. I ask a lot of questions of people, of um, going to different events, and um, my mother tells me that I play, you know, stump the docent, because I go to other museums and I ask questions that sometimes they aren't able to answer. Right. So then I get on this quest of finding the answer myself. Right, and, and that's good too, because perhaps maybe that helps the docent, you know, to be like, oh, well, you know what, maybe I should look that up too, so I can answer that question, and maybe add more to my tour or whatever they're doing. Um, what would you say, what, what are your favorite receipt books? Um, hmm. I'm gonna say that the most commonplace books that are used are the Hannah Glass yes. and the Amelia Simmons. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they're my favorite, but they are definitely a go-to okay. uh, because they have not only the gentry class receipts in it, but they also have commonplace receipts. Um, and I, being one of those that colors outside the box a lot, yeah. I have expanded or changed some of the receipts a bit right. um, to suit what I'm serving on a certain day. Um, so, there, and there's some other receipt books that are, Martha Washington has written one which has great revisionary receipts in it where someone went through and kind of interpreted 18th century into modern day terminology, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. 
Now, in addition to cooking, you also have a great talent for spinning and weaving as well. Um, which do you prefer, the cooking or the fibers? Definitely cooking. Cooking? Okay. Um, the spinning I do because I knit and crochet. Um, and it was just a way to provide myself with yarn. Mm -hmm. um, weaving, I find very tedious. Okay. Um, I don't enjoy the mathematics involved in warping a loom. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, just the, the weaving is kind of mindless. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you can throw a movie on and, and do that. Do but it, I enjoy yeah. the cooking because you can yeah. change it. Mm -hmm. You know, changing one simple ingredient can change the whole dish. Absolutely. Um, so it allows a lot more for an artistic creativity type of mindset. Yeah and um, you're not stuck into one rigid way of doing things. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I can definitely see that, absolutely. So what events are you going to be at next? Like anything at Depreciation Lands, wherever else? Next week we're doing a Frontier Foods yeah. at the Depreciation Lands. Um, I'm going to be doing chicken on a rotisserie yeah. uh, with a reflector oven, mm -hmm. uh, demonstrating how those work. Uh, I'm doing three other things, but I'm not exactly, I don't remember exactly what it is. One is definitely going to be some type of a savory pie, mm -hmm. uh, an herb pie or something. Uh, I'm doing some foraging, mm -hmm. uh, some cooking with stinging nettles, right. and mm -hmm. um, some other cattail and pandas. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview and that talk on 18th century cooking. And if you haven't been out to the Neville House, uh, definitely uh, come check us out this season, uh, see what we have to offer. And we have a lot going on. And in addition to that, stay tuned for the next episode and I will see you all soon.